Plant's Vegan Style. What's up, my plant-loving friends? Much love today. If you are on the East Coast, at least in New York, we just had a gnarly rainstorm. It was really fun. I was walking in it, actually, and got totally drenched. It was very cleansing. So I wanted to talk about something that a lot of people ask me. People ask me on YouTube. People ask me just my friends and, and family, even. Um... If I drink or smoke or do any plant-based drugs of that matter, because when you think about it, if you strictly just care about veganism, you can drink vodka and most beers and you can smoke weed and you can do all sorts of drugs. There's not much animal products in most um, synthetic and even natural drugs. So do you do them? because they are technically vegan. I can proudly say that I have not been under the influence of a drug, so no alcohol, no smoking, no drugs in two years now. Actually, it's the same amount of time when I became vegan from a vegetarian lifestyle. Um, I also cut out drinking and smoking and all that, and I did participate in that in high school for quite some time. Never abusively, but definitely more than casually. So I didn't drink or smoke until about 10th grade and I tried it a couple times and wasn't like, you know, it wasn't wasn't much and then it wasn't until like second semester of 11th grade that I started to, you know, smoke weed with my friends and drink a bit at parties and I enjoyed it a lot. I never abused it. Um, me and my friends are very artistic and creative and love to draw and act and improvise and we had a lot of fun just hanging out with friends never doing anything dangerous um, and never abusing it it was a more of a weekend thing and it was all good so I stopped drinking and smoking when I became vegan two years ago and so people ask me why it was never a problem you know if you use it in moderation it's probably not bad for your health and it's not dr not drinking and smoking is not about health for me so the reason I no longer drink or smoke or allow myself to get mentally stimulated by an external substance is because I am trying to achieve something much bigger than physical health. I'm trying, I'm trying to achieve a sense of bliss, enlightenment, satisfaction within my own mind and, with, and within my own soul. Trying to find higher consciousness. That is what it, it is about. Higher consciousness. And when you are on an external drug, so you intake something into your body from the outside world, whether it be alcohol or weed or mushrooms, you are allowing that external substance to affect your inner consciousness. And it feels good because we like to get out of our normal head that we think we're always sort of trapped in. And it feels good to sort of escape into this other realm. But the thing is... So I love it. So I love the effect of smoking weed, of being drunk. It's great. But I'm literally on my life goal as a yogi, being able to try to tap into that state purely within my own control and mind. It's like a magical power. So the reason I meditate every morning and the reason I choose to no longer let external substances affect my consciousness is because I'm working on trying to do it myself. So let's take this analogy. If you want to teach your friend, your brother, whatever, how to knit a sweater, do you think it would be best for you to teach them the stitches or for you to knit them a sweater every year and tell them to follow the pattern and try to figure it out for themselves? Clearly, the best way to, to teach someone something is to show them the steps and allow them to practice so that they can do it themselves versus simply handing it to them and getting it the easy way. So essentially, smoking weed, doing drugs, drinking alcohol, you can get those same effects in even higher states by practicing for weeks and months and years meditation, yoga, higher consciousness through your own body. And if you're given those things to you, Every weekend, every day, for a lot of people, you're getting further and further and further from being self-reliant on being able to do that yourself. So that is specifically why I choose not to take in those substances. They're great. I think they're awesome if you are someone that can handle them and you don't become violent from them. They're a really good way to sort of detox from the craziness in your mind. But what I've found 
is that when you smoke weed, when you drink alcohol, there's always the day after where you maybe feel crummy and you're getting further and you're becoming more dependent on something external. That's exactly what we're trying not to do in the yogic lifestyle. You want to be self sufficient and self reliant on bringing as much happiness and bliss and altered consciousness all on your own. And you can do that through meditation. There were studies in the 60s where these doctors with LSD from America went over to India to all of these sadhus and swamis and gave them a bunch of acid and it had no effect on them because they were able to control their consciousness to such a degree that external substances they could control. So that is essentially what we're trying to do in the yogic lifestyle. It's not trying to be boring and like just purely calm all the time. We're really trying to get into these other consciousness and being able to control it ourselves, which is really an amazing power. Because guess what? Drugs and alcohol cost money. They make you feel shitty a lot of times. They have a lot of side effects. Like when I used to smoke weed, I would want to eat everything in sight. And then you get a stomach ache, and then you get fat. And it's just like, do it the easy way. I mean, some would say it's the hard way because it takes practice. It's not like I can get into a, a high state from 10 minutes of meditation, but I know that if I practice my, you know, few minutes, my half an hour every single day, I've already felt the benefits of like, and it stays so much longer. When you smoke weed, you know, you smoke a joint, in four hours, it's done. There, there's, there, you're, you're out of the mindset. You're sort of depressed because of how good it was. When you meditate in the morning for an hour, your whole day is like, holy shit, I am feeling good. Literally, when I meditate for like a half an hour even in the morning, I can like be walking down the street at like 5 p.m., see like a flower and be like, oh my gosh, this is so freaking good. This is so amazing. And it, it changes everything. And then when I don't meditate... I notice that I, I'm more ticked off, I'm angrier, I, I don't see as much beauty in the world, okay? You can get those sensations of your high feeling from your drugs and weed and alcohol, you can get that from meditation and from yogic practices. The food is very important in being able to do this. If you are eating a diet of very high stimulating but low sort of life force vibration foods like meat, dairy, processed foods that are completely killed, completely dead, and contain a lot of lethargic nutrients like fat and high protein, it's going to be so much harder to achieve this altered state even through a dedicated meditation practice and things like that. The food is, is key. I would even say that if you're eating an animal-based and processed food diet, even not meditating and practicing diligently some spiritual practices, even changing your diet, you will begin to feel those levels of highness and energy and just peace and sort of looking at the world in sort of a more vibrating, amazing way just by changing your diet. So eating the right foods in combination with a spiritual practice and meditation and yoga and even physical activity to do some detoxification those combined is just setting yourself up for success. And if you don't include the exercise or you don't include the healthy diet, it's just going to make it way harder for you to achieve your goal. This is why this is intersectional. It's not just, uh, you know, I take one pill and get this result. It's a lifestyle to, in order to, you know, get to this state that, that all us yogis strive for of spiritual enlightenment and just, you know, being high on life all the time and seeing the beauty in every single thing. Um, so food is important, lifestyle is important, exercise is important, sleep's important, but you cannot achieve that as well if you're also taking these external substances because they're taking you further and further from being self-reliant on getting to those states. It's the easy wrong versus the hard right, essentially, because drugs and alcohol are, have a negative effect on your health, they cost money, you become reliant on the external substance, and you usually feel shitty afterwards. So I highly recommend that you transition to more of a, you know, take some yoga classes, take some spiritual um, sort of meditation skill workshops in order for you to learn. You can even use YouTube. You can do it all for free to learn the techniques 
that you can practice every day so that you can get those states of consciousness without using drugs and alcohol and external substances. So that's where I am right now. Obviously, I'm young. My life is always changing, but I have, I'm 21. I haven't done this stuff since I was 19, and every day I just get more and more confident in what I'm doing and that I don't need to go back to that stuff. So it's been working for me. Who knows what will happen in 10 years, but I'll let you know. If you like my info, if you like following me around every day, subscribe to my channel. Tell your friends to subscribe. Like my videos. Comment. If you make comments on specific questions of videos that you want me to make, I will make those videos. I have the time. It's raining in New York City. Look at my view of Prospect Park. It's absolutely beautiful. So, much love, everyone. Comment and subscribe. Peace and plants, as my buddy Rich Roll says. This is Vegan Style. This is Vegan Style.